That's right. right. Correct. Nigel. Yeah. Nigel. Okay, it's we're here Nigel. inside the cube for a special uh, and exclusive coverage, expanded, extended coverage of HP's um, Project Moonshot press event. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Uh, Dave and I are on the ground doing the analysis and the commentary and talking to folks who were in the room, on stage, uh, part of the HP big press event. I'm sure the journalists, Wall Street Journal, Reuters, all those guys are running out, banging out stories. We got our post up. I wrote a post. I think it should be up. We got pictures. Um, Niall, you're with Cantor Fitzgerald, which uh, is uh, – up there kind of as a testimonial, right? You guys uh, are also do a lot of uh, market analysis, but you're kind of demoing or talking about the benefits. Well, yeah, we're really excited to be evaluating the technology, and, uh, um, you know, there's a lot of trends driving are looking at it. Um, you know, Dave mentioned that, you know, high-frequency trading isn't necessarily the first application that might come to mind, and certainly a high-frequency trader, the first thing that comes to mind is I care about low latency, Right, send me your, right. your your biggest baddest machine. Um, you know, make it go as fast as it can, um, and it's all about reacting to each event as quickly as we can. For the other guy, yeah, Bef- one trend, the one trend they didn't talk about on stage, yeah. and talked about all the buzzwords. You know, I actually used the word Web 2.0, which I kind of like. Was like, guys, <laughs> FYI, that's kind of history now. Um, I wouldn't use that buzzword if I was HP in the marketing. But anyway, they talked about cloud. They talked about big data. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear real time, and now so you guys obviously are focused on real time. Well, we're focused on real time, but y- you have to follow the data through its life cycle, right? So, yeah, we have we have our algorithms running, and we're trying to react to market data as quickly as we can. Um, but, y- you know, when you've got billions of events every day and you're, you need to run analysis in the course of a day over all that data, that's a lot of data in memory. Um, but then what happens is, well, we want to run that same analysis or some new ideas over all the days in history, right? So... There's a there's a transition point there where we go from being really latency focused to being really throughput focused. So you know we want to research some ideas. You you have some quantitative analyst who's thinking about okay this model maybe I can look at the data in this way and they want to run an experiment. What if simulations? Exactly. Okay. So they want to run an experiment and they, what they want to do is say okay grab all the data we have and run this experiment. So immediately they have a huge appetite. For, okay, so for, take for, us for through course. take us through the sausage factory as we sure. start making the sausage back mm-hmm. at the ranch where you guys do all this stuff. Sure. What goes on to make that happen alternatively to what was announced today? Because people are trying to make sense of this announcement. You know, why is it such a game changer? What's the old way and how this new way changes sure. that? Sure. They mentioned ten racks down to a half a rack. I mean, just paint a picture of sure. how this all works. So, you know, people that build teams like, like ours and, and build high-frequency trading systems, uh, we, we are very um, concerned with a few different types of metrics. You know, we've talked a lot about the low latency one, but that's just one metric that we care about. Um, so at each point in the data lifecycle, we have systems that we write, um, and, and typically we write all our own software uh, to, to do this type of processing, um, where we need to, say, look at performance, or we need to look at, okay, can we keep all the data in memory, and, and can we process it quickly? And it might be a very compute-intensive, so we'll, we'll look at, say, GPUs, or you know, we're really excited about Intel Mic program. Um, but when you get to the throughput problem, it's really about how quickly can you get through all of this data? Right, so it it becomes something that looks quite like the traditional scale out. Well, I say traditional, but you know, yeah, the, it's, it's only the less. Yeah, today's a ton of servers exactly in exactly. a rack. Um, and then what you care about are, are metrics that involve dollar signs. So can we be cost effective about doing this? Right. So, um, you know, a third of your of your uh, cost is really coming from power for whatever reason. Right? It's somehow linked to the power. That's just one of the biggest costs when you're, when you're operating at scale. Um, so anything you can do to have um, higher throughput while keeping your power the same or even better, lowering your, your power usage while you're raising your throughput is a good thing. It's a huge deal. It's a huge, huge, huge deal. deal. Not a little deal. Massive Not a huge deal. deal. So you, you multiply it out by all the simulations you want to do and all the machines that you'd like to have to run those on. So right? a company like so. Facebook, for example, mm-hmm. I mean, what's their power challenges? I mean, they must have massive. They've got 800 million people on the on sure. the network. Sure. So that's an example of someone who would take advantage of exactly. this. Exactly. And and they will have um, you know partitions of their global infrastructure that are dedicated to these kind of throughput tasks. So some will be dedicated to the, the web serving, the parts that you interact with directly, but there'll also be other partitions that are, you know, analyzing all that data and running their offline analytics. And it's much the same kind of challenge that we would face. Is so, there an, is it, go ahead, so we have a lot of people watching here. That, sure. that, that, that this is new to them. Um, so uh, we're, we're here with uh, Niall Dalton, who's with Cantor Fitzgerald. He runs high frequency trading. We're talking about using a new form of processor, low power uh, processors, to solve big data problems. Really, is what you're talking about here. 
What exactly are you doing with these processors, Calzada and HP? It wasn't clear from your remarks today. You actually have them in-house and you're testing them? You're actually using them in production? Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, no, we do, we're not using them just yet. Okay. So um, I've actually um, been looking at ARM for a while now because it, it was clear to us that when you look, up, look at low power, high throughput, that ARM was going to play a part. So even, even before we... Uh, start talking about Calzada, we were already looking to ARM and we brought up a little piece of our software on ARM processors and it's actually remarkably straightforward when you have a standard Linux environment and the standard tool chain, so you know, your C compiler and your debuggers, it's actually pretty straightforward for a good programming team to bring up their code in this environment. Uh, so you know, we have done some experiments and um, we've been talking with Calzada really about the fact that you, need, you genuinely do need to build a server class chip. Right, so if if I take a prototyping board with an ARM processor, um, they're not built for high throughput. They're, they don't really have the I/O capacity. Uh, the chips don't have large caches. They don't have the kind of integrated high bandwidth, low latency interconnect that Calzada are building into the chips. Um, so I've been talking a lot with Calzada really about uh, what needs to be different when you're you're taking that low power technology and and really scaling it up to a server class processor. Okay, so we're in the, we're still in the middle of that. So that's the secret sauce that they bring in. They're obviously exactly. in the lead, or they wouldn't be here on stage with HP. Now, do you? Now we talked about energy, and you said a third of the cost, and it's probably at least a third of the cost over the life of these systems is, sure. is yep. goes to energy and power and cooling and and all the infrastructure surrounding that. What about uh, the software cost, software development cost to optimize the software to take advantage of these new processors? Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Have you considered that? Oh, we, we uh, certainly... Undoubtedly uh, you've considered it, but can you we, sort of we, share some very, metrics with We're very us? focused on it. Um, I, th I think the thing to remember is w when you need to drive performance and efficiencies mm -hmm. across this data lifecycle, so it's not just a challenge in the throughput end to you know optimize our code. We also look at optimizing our code um, for better performance on hardware we already have, but also where the hardware is going. Mm -hmm. So you know there are new... Uh, extensions to the x86 and we, we'd like to be very aggressive about adopting those so when Intel you know innovates with a new vector construction set we're wanting to take advantage of that straight away so it's, it's very much a process of understanding where the hardware is going and understanding that you need to have an ongoing process of tuning your software and f uh, tracking your metrics and making sure that over time you're getting closer to where you need to be um, if you look at some of the places where, for instance, you might be very uh, floating point intensive, compute intensive, the kind of place where you'd be tempted to use a GPU, you have exactly that same problem. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the reasons, for instance, I'm excited about the Intel Mic program is that they're promising to make that easier by using standard instruction set for us. Um, so really across that life cycle, and particularly in throughput when I look at ARM, uh, it's an ongoing thing you want to do to improve your metrics. Now. What's really important is the ability to get your code up and running quickly, right? Um, and that's why we depend on standard environments. So, you know, having Linux, having the standard tool chain, that lets us get up and running quickly. And from there, you can start iterating. And, that, and that's just not um, something you do once. It's something we actually continuously do as we, we change our code and fine-tune it for the um, particular platform and platforms over time. So it's an ongoing process, not just a one-off right. thing. And it's, it's the same for all the platforms, as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned. Good. All right, Niall Dalton, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. We're on a very tight schedule here. I appreciate you sure. stopping by. And uh, good luck with, uh, okay. with